we're finding the Levi Tatina after one month of travelling. We have a nightmare week of countless leaks and plumbing issues. And we also try to build drug dealers holding machine guns. I'm Kenny Sauter, this is episode two of Running a Business or Travelling the World. Having a camera and filming yourself is just creating unnecessary tension. This is the artist, the driver, the Absolutely. Where it's dangerous, the guide is going to just tell me quickly, so I might just have to just cut filming all of a sudden. Not going to lie, it kind of reminds me of India a little bit. As I walk past, you shout at that, Gringo, 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 which basically is foreign, that's not a bad word. I had to stop filming for quite a bit as we went down. It's like countless drug dealers and one just standing there with a massive machine gun. Right here, this street. Morning, guys. Tuesday morning, it is the 19th of April. The Easter break has passed us. Hope you guys had a fantastic Easter break. I'm just having a coffee. I've almost finished a coffee. I'm one of those people that really need a coffee to get started in the day. It is what it is. So, what's the plan today? So, today we are uh, actually we're in Bariloche at the moment, which is a uh, our final place in Argentina. And we are checking out in, it's actually 11 o'clock now, so I'm, we're checking out in, in one hour's time. Uh, so there's not much work I can do this morning, um, but I just want to share this with you guys. The first thing I normally do every single morning is uh, I like to just analyze or just take a viewpoint, a quick viewpoint of what my current state of mind is. Being four hours behind uh, the UK, uh, I wake up to a phone full of messages sometimes I get because some people don't know I'm traveling at the moment uh, I get phone calls and obviously I'm, it's half five in the morning or you know four o'clock in the morning and I'm sleeping <laughs> uh, what I should be doing is waking up at five in the morning or, or three uh, four in the morning and uh, start my ideal morning routine more on that later I actually have been slacking hard for the last month since we've uh, arrived in Argentina Work has been falling behind. I've got a lot of admin to do. Although operationally the team are on top of things, there's certain things that I like to do. Uh, for example, an overview of the bookkeeping, the books, knowing the the P and L reports, knowing who's paying, who is, who aren't paying, who needs to be chased. Uh, that is what allows us to keep on top of things. It allows me to feel good and relax and go about my day. So. Because I wake up to a lot of the messages, I, the first thing I'd like to do is get plugged in into the laptop, connect with the team. Uh, I have a list of KPIs that I've pre-written and I just go over them and check in, update myself on what's going, in, going on in the business. So what's my current state of mind at the moment? I'm very tired. Um, We've been trekking now for quite a lot. Argentina is just full of treks mainly. Or with, with the places we've been in Argentina have been all about trekking. I'm all trekked out. Today's our last day in Bariloche and actually, in fact, our last day in uh, Argentina. Uh, we check out at 12 o'clock in about an hour's time and we are going to move on. So we're going to take another bus to the capital city called Buenos Aires. And then from there, it's a 24 hour bus journey, another one. <laughs> Uh, and I might use that time on the on the bus to actually catch up with some of the work that I need to do because uh, I don't think I can do much in the next hour. I'm going to have to just pack and pretty much check out. Uh, we then move on to Brazil. To those that have commented in the uh, YouTube comment section, if you guess Brazil, you guess right. We are off to Sao Paulo. We land in Sao Paulo on Wednesday, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. That leaves just pretty much Thursday and Friday in terms of work. So one thing I like to do first is from a state of mind point of view, 
get jacked in, get 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 plugged in, uh, work out where everybody is, uh, where where everybody's at in the in the team, uh, work out what needs to be done on my list, prioritize and crack on. Take take each task as it comes, really. Anyhow, I'm gonna crack on and I will speak to you shortly. Two hours later. All right, guys. So I've managed to do a massive to-do list, and uh, I've, I've prioritised. There's not much I can do within the next hour. The most urgent thing I've got on today is we have actually an empty room. Uh, we've actually got two empty rooms in our HMO portfolio, and we've managed to find a tenant. So the team have gone out and uh, uh, actually got two offers for the room. Yes! Yes! And the first thing I have to do today is just review the documentation that is part of the vetting process. And the reason why I like to check that is because I like to, it's, it's something I've recently introduced just to have more control over the business. Uh, previously, we've had the team make the decision on whether we accept tenants uh, going forward and whether they've passed a the referencing process. Uh, but during the pandemic, we found that, you know, there was tenants that were coming through that just were... Uh, that, that would just were not reliable, they just weren't paying. So uh, I've decided to just put that on my uh, responsibilities where I do a last check and make sure that all of the boxes have been ticked. And um, one thing I'd like to do is call the tenant and just make sure that from my gut feeling point of view that they aren't gonna cause any problems and are gonna be reliable and will pay and won't have any issues with paying in the future. Uh, that's the main thing I'm going to do now, and then I'm probably going to just shut down uh, and then pack, check out, head to the bus terminal, uh, and then on the bus, I will continue with work, and I will catch you on there. Hey Melissa, just sent you a message about Canning Town and it looks like, yep, yeah, Jimmy is in the res. Uh, if you can respond to him and just find out what his plan is, uh, just ask him, look, do you have a payment plan that you could agree to now? Um, and also uh, regarding the cracks, yes, Remix, Remix, Remax are dealing with the cracks, um, but I'm not sure whether they know whether those cracks also exist in uh, Jimmy's room. So if possible, could you forward that email to um, a chap called Khalid from Remax? He's the, the property manager there and uh, see if they can, they can sort it really. Right, what's happening guys? I am on the bus. It is approximately seven o'clock now. I've been on the bus for a few hours, it was delayed by about an hour. Here's what it is. Uh, we hopefully aren't going to miss our flight. <laughs> uh, so, just giving you a quick update of what's been happening today. Uh, I didn't get to do much when I was in the apartment, uh, but I've been on the phone uh, from the apartment all the way to this point now. Uh, I've actually lost signal, so there's not much I can do going forward. I'm probably going to shut down and uh, just relax, sleep for the night and then uh, wake up tomorrow morning and see if I've got signal and then continue working. Uh, but at the moment there's not, nothing much I can do. Uh, what's happened today? Uh, one thing that's happened today is uh, we've had the, the, t the new tenant uh, documents that I mentioned earlier. Uh, they checked out fine, sounds like a good tenant on paper uh, and we're going to move forward with this tenant. So the tenant is going to get the room and they they move in tomorrow, which is fantastic. So the team are putting together the welcome pack and uh, the next step is for uh, for Alan to do a, uh, a check-in process. Another thing that's happened today, uh, we've been having uh, issues with a particular tenant. Uh, this is a fairly new tenant, by the way, who had moved in about a month and a half ago, just before uh, I started traveling. We had a new tenant move in uh, about a month and a half ago, just before I started travelling, and uh, seemed to be fine. But recently, we found that this tenant has basically been uh, causing issues with. We found this tenant been causing issues with our cleaner, uh, who is doing a fantastic job cleaning. But this this particular tenant seems to think it's okay to be racially abusive to this to to, to this member of 
of stuff and it's just unacceptable. I don't understand how tenants, I don't understand how tenants can get away with absolutely disgusting behaviour. Anyhow, uh, we have made a decision as a team to remove this tenant. Unfortunately, she is in a six month contract, so evicting her means uh, realistically evicting her uh, with, with grounds uh, where the judge will allow for. Uh, allow in our favour is most likely very very unlikely so uh, we are going to try and mutually agree for the tenant to move out or be rehoused elsewhere uh, it's just a shame that we have people out there that still still um, think it's okay to to racially abuse someone uh, I, I believe this tenant might have OCD issues or maybe mental health issues uh, it's a shame because there's only so much betting you can do uh, they seem good when they first move in but you know things always things always uh, become apparent when they move in and their behavior changes so so that's that I've uh, just been dealing with that today and uh, the final thing is we've managed to uh, get another inquiry for a painting job so this is to do with my construction business So we've, I've, I've priced up the uh, the job, it's just a simple painting job and we're going to schedule that in and great, means another sale, it's a win. That's it for now, I'm going to log off, sign out and catch you guys tomorrow. 24 hours later. Yes guys, now in Sao Paulo, Brazil. My type of weather. So, casually walking past this building here, thinking it's at some sort of hotel. Turns out it's an actual bloody hospital. If only the NHS had buildings like that. Blimey. So, Paolo, baby. Right, what's happening guys? It's Saturday afternoon, about a quarter to three. And I've got to be honest, I've not been keeping very disciplined. Work, my admin and work is falling behind. The team are doing a wonderful job. From an operations point of view, it's, it's taken away. But in terms of what I have to do, I've been slacking and it's got to stop. Hammer. I hold my hands up, admit fully. I've not been keeping to my ideal routine. My ideal routine is waking up very early in the morning, setting my anchor in place by doing an hour's meditation, and then exercising or going for a run, coming back, and then starting my working day, get at least three hours a day done every morning including getting content out. Speaking of which, in terms of content, I've been slacking on that too. Uh, we, To be fair, we've been traveling most of the time, so uh, it's very hard to, to actually film anything uh, useful to you guys. So uh, now that we arrived in Sao Paulo, although we've been here since Thursday, I've not been doing much. I've just been, to be fair, relaxing and having a bit of a chilled chilled few days but that's got to stop I need to get cracking and uh, what I'm going to do now is quickly go grab something to eat for lunch a very late lunch 
and then head back to the apartment and see what I can crack on with. It is Saturday, but I think needs must. I need to make up for what I've missed, really. So anyway, catch you guys in a bit. Right, what's happening, guys? I am now back from lunch. To be fair, I lie a little bit. Uh, it's been a couple of hours since I've had lunch. I've just been lounging, been lazy as usual. So I finally got my laptop out and I'm ready to do some work. It is 10 to six in the evening here. And uh, the way I saw it, uh, the, way I, the way I see it is, if I'm not motivated to do work, just stick with discipline because discipline will carry you through if you don't have the motivation. So now that I've got everything out and, feel, and, and, I'm, and I'm set up, uh, I actually have the motivation. The motivation now has just appeared. I'm, I've got this far, I may as well just continue. So the first thing I'm gonna do uh, is see what the internet connection is like here. Now, Sao Paulo is a city, uh, quite commercial, quite well known, and I don't think I'm gonna have any uh, internet connectivity issues. And the first thing I am going to do, the first thing on my list is to upload the YouTube videos that I've been doing. Um, it's going to be uploaded. I don't edit my videos. I actually do not have the time to do that and nor the school, uh, skill set. Uh, I do have a trusted friend who um, is really, really good at what he does. And as they say, let the experts do what they're meant to be doing. I'm going to leave it in his capable hands. And what you're seeing right now has been edited by him. I'll give him a shout out. Adrian, shout out, mate. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Google, run a speed test and have a look. Okay, cool. I think we might be okay with uploading. So I'm just going to do that first before I go to our next destination. And who knows what the internet connection is going to be like there. Here we go. My first task is to upload all of the YouTube content that I've got, all of the A roll, B roll, um, if you guys don't know what that means, uh, it's pretty much what you're seeing right now, basically. While I do that, I thought I'd let you know how I get into the mood and focus. And the way I do it is put my trusted beats, headphones on, and I like to go to my YouTube channel. I've got a playlist already there of my favorite songs. And that just really gets me in a zone. And kind of gives me a bit of a bit of a pump really that going to the gym so um yeah playlist first youtube video uploads and then we'll go on to the rest of the to-do list Okay, so I've managed to upload quite a few things. Uh, upload all of the, well, I've uploaded quite a bit of the YouTube videos just to test, see how it goes. I've been doing one by one and it seemed to upload pretty fine. So I've just whacked the whole lot in and it uh, looks like it's going to be uploaded in 20 minutes. So I'm going to leave that going in the background. And now I'm going to go to my trusted Trello board. Uh, guys, if you don't know what Trello is, I uh, recommend you Google it. It's an amazing tool. It's completely transformed my life. I think I mentioned it in my previous video, uh, episode one. Click here to watch that. It pretty much changed my life, basically. So I, I use it to organize my personal life, also my, my business life and my general to-do list, whether that's on a weekday or weekend uh, projects. I use Trello pretty much for everything and uh, I tell you what, if you want me to do a video on that separately, on how to use Trello and how I use it and uh, how I use it for myself, comment below and see if we can get a video together for you. So what's first on the list? Uh, I can see the first thing I, the first thing I like to normally do uh, is pretty much use Trello to what I call, um, it's actually a term within the uh, within the corporate industry. Um, a lot of software com companies use this. It's, it's, the methodology is called Agile methodology. And I pretty much use Agile methodology for my whole life. Those that don't know what Agile methodology is, 
Uh, I may just do another video on that too. Uh, there's a lot of value I think I can give. How what, everything that I've learned in my corporate life, uh, and how I pretty much use the same methodologies to um, to to organise my current life. Um, uh, I, I feel that I, I pretty much use that for my life at the moment. And I, I you know, if if, if it's um, I, it's been it's been of good value to my current working life and even my my normal life admin outside of work um, and if it's something that is value to me then it's probably going to be value to you so again comment mm -hmm. below if you want to know how I use agile methodology and uh, make it a part of my life and get <laughs> done I digress slightly going back to the point the first thing on the list that so the first thing I'd like to do on the list as part of the agile methodology is something called grooming the backlog I know it sounds wrong but it's not it's actually really really good so it's 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 a it's an opportunity for you to have a bird's eye view of the things that are going on in your whatever your backlog is and the moment you do that and after you finish that particular exercise all of a sudden anxiety disappears and the thinking disappears and all you do is pretty much turn that bird's eye view into actionable tasks thinking goes out the window and you just pretty much just do things on a task by task basis. Um, and that is how you do it, my friends. Before I even do the backlog grooming and start on that, um, because it's Saturday and I know it's outstanding, I should have done this on Wednesday, it's something I do on a, uh, every single Wednesday. Um, it's something I ideally want to eventually outsource to my bookkeeper, but it's something I still want to control at the moment while I'm here traveling for the next 12 months. Uh, well, we've been traveling for a month already, so 11 months left. I am going to work on transforming that part of my admin to uh, outsource to our bookkeeper. So that's what I'm going to be doing first. Uh, I'm actually going to be uh, reconciling all my rents, having a look at who's paid and who hasn't paid, if any, hopefully. Uh, hopefully that's not the case, but uh, there's always one or two people that don't pay. Um, and that then turns into another to-do list. So for those that haven't paid, we then execute our uh, rent arrears procedure. Uh, so everything has a procedure and all we do is just follow process. That is how you take anxiety out of the picture, emotion out of the picture, and things just get done. Okay, so here we go. Two hours later. Okay, guys, uh, I it's, what, it's five to eight, almost eight o'clock. Uh, so I've been at it for two hours. Um, there's actually quite a lot to do. I haven't actually managed to finish the bookkeeping. Um, with the bookkeeping, there seems to be a lot of things that need tidying up. So it's going to take a lot longer than I thought, not as straightforward. Uh, I think I'm going to call it a day there. It's uh, like I said, it's eight o'clock. I'm going to go and get some dinner. One thing I've uh, learned from this week is if I don't stick to my own rules, uh, having my discipline, having having the, uh, the the ideal morning routine, things are not just going to get done. You know, um, things are just going to keep adding and adding and adding to the, uh, uh, the backlog. And uh, that's where, uh, you know, you have the feeling of overwhelm. Um, so I'm glad I'm doing these YouTube videos because I actually am uh, using the episodes to hold myself accountable. So you guys have to hold me accountable for me sticking to the routine. Um, uh, you know, comment, make sure you comment below and make sure I stick to the routine and, and, and keep that discipline. Um, even when I'm not motivated, remind me that I need to keep discipline. Uh, so I'm gonna call it a day there. I am. I, I'm actually going to throw a gauntlet down and say I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning if I set a time, maybe four or five o'clock in the morning, uh, get stuff done. Tomorrow, if I can get the bookkeeping done, uh, I, which I think I can, uh, I think I'll be in a good place to uh, then just go over the, the groom in the backlog, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, so I can, I can have a, a high level view of what's going on, uh, get ready for next week. Tomorrow, uh, I am traveling over to uh, the next destination. It's still within Brazil, but we're actually heading to uh, Rio, uh, Rio de Janeiro, um, which I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to some beach time. Um, and uh, let's see what happens. Uh, let's see if I can get all of that done so that I can enjoy the last day 
in uh, in Sao Paulo um, to then travel over to Rio. That's it for Saturday. See you tomorrow. Are you there pedaling? You need to help me. You can't really leave the pedal by myself. It is Monday evening and I'm having a bad beer day. You know, you know. You have your good days and you have your bad days. That's what for all the people that have beards, you have your good days and you have your bad days. And today I'm having a bad day. Right, Saturday evening, uh, sorry, Monday evening. It's our last day in Sao Paulo. We actually extended by another day. And we are in a place, we're in some sort of park, I forgot the name, in Sao Paulo. And I'm being chauffeured by the wife. Ibira Puera Park. There you go. So, what's been happening? I've managed to do work on Saturday, uploaded all the uh, episodes that I've done so far in terms of content. As I was saying, sorry, got cut off. I've uh, been doing some more bookkeeping, which has been uh, making me feel better. And then that continued through to Sunday. And so that was uh, Sunday. And this morning, I didn't get to do much because we had to check out the, the apartment. Uh, we thought we'll take a nice bike ride, but then we are heading to, uh, we actually, we have a, um, a bus to catch to Rio de Janeiro at 10.15 in the evening and it's a six hour bus drive. We'll get there at like quarter to five in the morning and hopefully I'll get some sleep on the bus and hopefully not go back to sleep when, when we arrive. So wake up, shower up or what have you, get ready and begin my working day. So let's try and make tomorrow a, uh, a fresh start. And we've got lots of stuff to do, we've got uh, Alan is actually off today. He had a, a dentist appointment. Had something to do, had, had something wrong with his teeth. He's probably eating one too many stones. Um, uh, Melissa's hard at work managing the tenants and the ongoing operations. Uh, we've had quite a few maintenance jobs come up. Uh, we've got Alan. We've we had Alan do um, scheduled for a painting job tomorrow. But that's now rescheduled for Wednesday because we've got a couple of emergencies on our end. So Alan will be back in tomorrow, cracking on with uh, some uh, some leak. So that we've got, we have a few leaks uh, in one or two properties. And uh, tomorrow morning I'm going to first uh, do my bird's eye view task where I get to see everything, look at the KPIs. Uh, oh my god, look at that dog. I think the dog knew he was getting filmed, he was just showing off, look. I had to show that. Um, the dog's as scruffy as my beard. As I was saying, sorry, easily distracted. Uh, I'm a massive dog lover by the way, uh, hence why I um, got distracted. So, tomorrow morning, bird's eye view uh, task of looking at uh, what's going on within the business. Uh, I have a lot of invoices that need to be sorted. What we normally do is I look at the invoices and I simply just forward them on to our bookkeeper. Our bookkeeper then puts it all in a system called Xero. Uh, I highly recommend that. Uh, completely allows you to get maximum transparency of what's going on within the business. Providing you've set it up, of course, there's a lot of things that I'm not using zero to the best, the, the max of its potential, but um, I think we uh, there's still quite a bit of work to do. Uh, one thing I want to do actually is completely outsource the bookkeeping, the admin side of it, that is, anyway. Um, for example, every Wednesday I reconcile uh, what's in our client account, which is basically uh, a bank account that simply, the sole purpose of the bank account is to have all rents that we have in the portfolio, including our clients' ones, 
and uh, it just goes into that account and then we use that account to reconcile what we're what we've received um, no expenses come out of that bank account it's simply just to collect rent and then the rent from that then goes to either our client landlords or to myself if it's uh, within my portfolio anyway uh, that's something I'd like to get outsourced um, and uh, I think that's what I'm going to be working on this week this coming week um, I want to finish all of the admin that I've got have a look at the P&L reports have a view of how we're doing as a business um, and then start continuing with the transformation that I was talking about in our in our last episode or earlier on um, and yeah the uh, idea is to create a, a well-oiled machine that can operate uh, I'm finding that I'm having to do a lot of admin stuff I, you know even at this point in uh, you know after after 14 years of running this business there's still a lot that needs to be done uh, in terms of uh, making it a well-oiled machine um, and I think that's what we'll do so I'll, I'll, I'll um, leave it at that and I'll catch up with you guys shortly Thursday afternoon and we have arrived in Rio de Janeiro. Apologies uh, for not filming since my last clip. The last clip you saw was on a Monday where I was in Sao Paulo. Managed to get quite a lot done this week. It's been a very very productive week. Um, the reason for the lack of filming this week, as you know the format normally is day-to-day -day vlogging being in Rio uh, it's been uh, it's actually quite it's, it's it, having a camera and filming yourself is just creating unnecessary tension and there is a, a high risk of, uh, of, of being of, of your your equipment being stolen uh, a lot of kids nearby and from the favelas they usually uh, there's usually gangs here that, that look out for touristy equipment and pickpocket so that's the reason for the lack of filming uh, when we've been out we've not been showing our cameras or using our cameras um, but yeah hence the, the, the reason for the lack of filming this week uh, we are in Rio for uh, well, until next week so I'll try my best to give you as much content as possible this week so on Monday evening we arrived in Rio uh, caught an Uber went to our Airbnb apartment and the next morning uh, we've pretty much just explored Copacabana um, really nice beach uh, again you have to be really wary so since Monday uh, not much has been happening I've actually used this time to catch up on work um, the last time I filmed anything I was telling you guys how, how I've lacked so much discipline and I've had a huge backlog of work I have changed that. I've stuck to my discipline. One thing I found with traveling is uh, it's very, very hard to find the motivation to uh, to work. Um, and uh, there's one thing I have to say, really, uh, where you lack motivation, stick to discipline. Discipline is what's going to get you through it. If you wake up on a Monday morning and have had a really, really long weekend, stick to discipline because discipline is what's going to get you to get done.
discipline is going to take the emotion out of it. Tuesday and Wednesday was pretty much checking out the beaches and uh, managed to get a lot of uh, admin work done. I've caught up on all my emails, all invoices, a lot of bot keeping, all of that fun stuff. In terms of the routine and the discipline, I've been waking up early, which is good, uh, not too early. Uh, they say, I, I, I've been wanting to do exercise and go for a run every morning, uh, but they say not to go out alone uh, in the dark. So uh, when I wake up, it's usually before sunrise. Uh, but yeah, I've had to skip the training and just do a bit of training in, in the room. Just simple stuff, press-ups, exercises, anything to get the heart going. And uh, yeah, in terms of discipline, I think we are there, back on track. We. Where you're not motivated, which might be today. Let discipline carry you when motivation can't. On that note, I'm going to leave you with some footage of this beautiful place, which, by the way, is the, one of the modern wonders of the world. Check this out. Friday, 12 o'clock, and we have got a guided tour. We are on a guided tour in one of the favelas, and we are at a local artist shop. It's real, real talent here. Check this out. Amazing, amazing drawings. Definitely going to be purchasing a few stuff now. Just to uh, help with local community, but I think their talent goes without saying anyway. This is the artist, Adriano. Nice to meet you. Follow this chap. Follow this chap. Adrian.silver1. Follow him. <laughs> Last one. Thank you. I have to say, yeah, it might be a bit dangerous, as they say, in favelas, but the locals and in favelas. The most friendliest people that you'd ever meet. It's not all that bad. Although I am with a guide. I am with a guide and he did say... ...about the transportation in favela. Okay? We have the bus. Uh, we're gonna see like a white van with a yellow line. Okay? Is a transportation for the locals in the favela. Here, the motorcycle taxi. We're gonna see all over this place the motorcycle taxi and also the normal buses. The motorcycle taxis and the vans every Friday you have to pay taxes for the dealers. As I was saying earlier, uh, where it's dangerous, the guide is gonna just tell me quickly, so I might just have to just cut filming all of a sudden and 
while I'm here, check that wiring out in the background. That's the wiring for the mains electricity here. Talk about Spaghetti Junction, flipping hell. I don't know if that's going to pass on the IPR. We're going to go down now. Okay. We're going Valley what? Street number four. The real estate street value street like street has so much one. potential here. If okay, only they knew. Really there we go. It's actually a barber shop. Not gonna lie, it kind of reminds me of India a little bit. filming there for a second actually walked past a really young guy probably as young as my nephew sitting there blasting music as I walked past he was shouting out Gringo 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 which basically is foreign that's not a bad word um, just gave him a quick spud said hello uh, but yeah he was a, a, a drug dealer lookout so amazing they told you guys you guys are like watching who is coming who is passing and also make the firework sign when the police are around oh. they have the sellers and the delivery they have the sell and the different drugs they also have the, the they have the security guys mate i can see why people don't come down here i had to stop filming for quite a bit as we went down it's like countless drug dealers and one just standing there with a massive machine gun he actually said hello in in portuguese i guess they were friendly but i had i just had to stop recording uh, actually i had to hide my camera anyway we continue Again, start filming. Had to go through a main place where it was just full of drug dealers and machine guns. Uh, I, I just couldn't film it at all. Not allowed to film it at all. Um, I'd rather be at peace with these guys rather than the opposite side. They're holding machine guns, man. Anyway, they were quite friendly, funny enough, nodding and saying hello and calling me gringo and all of that, which, which, which means foreigner. Uh, but yeah. On we go. There was a, there was a, someone on. There was a couple of drug dealers on the table, and uh, there was an accountant beside the accountant. He had a, a master pistol sitting there. Uh, but yeah, in a favela in Brazil, in Rio, part of the job description of being an accountant means. One of the pump, company company perks that you get is you get a gun. <laughs> anyway, on to the next. So there we are at the bottom of the favela, and we have not seen the background. That yellow building where we started, somewhere up there. I love you to see it on camera. It's amazing how far we've come down. 
crazy, 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 crazy. Anyway, I mean that's it for the propellers. I'm out. have a look at the footage and I'll see if I can uh, get a good take out all of the crap footage and uh, go from there. Anyhow that's Friday done and uh, see how we go tomorrow. <laughs>
carnival. What an experience. Don't know how I'm still awake. I'm shattered. Fell asleep a couple of times. Stuck in a bit of traffic. A Saturday evening slash Sunday morning. Over and out. Monday, bank holiday Monday, and uh, I didn't get to film much content. Uh, well, I didn't get to actually uh, talk to you guys uh, about what went down on Saturday. Uh, so Friday night, we obviously went out and enjoyed ourselves in the evening. Uh, Saturday, uh, we did a, a walking tour, and we went to these uh, uh, steps, famous steps in uh, a place called. Lapel, I think. Lapel. So yeah, the stairs were uh, famous stairs uh, in, a, in a place called Lapa. Uh, really interesting story behind it, where uh, someone came over and he decided to stay and live in the area. And there was these long, famous stairs, which you'll see in the montage, uh, where he, he, he actually um, he, he wanted to decorate and make it look really, really nice. And uh, he actually got people from all over the world local sorry he actually got people locally to um, to donate tiles and the whole stairs is just created with loads of donations of, 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 of uh, tiles and uh, yeah check it out really really good later on we went to the carnival uh, unfortunately I fell asleep during the carnival it was early hours I must add uh, and I did fall asleep throughout the carnival it was literally at six seven o'clock in the morning so yeah, check this out. 